Hey guys, we're back again today with another video about X Rebirth. Today we'll be talking about trading. You know, I uh, originally I sat down. This game is very deep, very complex, and it seems like there's a lot to it, and it can be very confusing. But to make money using some trading, just to get up and start at the beginning, it's really not that hard. You only need two things. You just need some trade agents and some trading vessels. So. This is more of a beginner's guide, I suppose. This is the easy way to get up and running, making some money really, really fast. So, all you need, as I said, are some trade agents and a capital vessel that can do some trading. So, to get a trade agent, all you gotta do is dock with one of the stations here. This is the Albion Skunk. Any stations you wanna do business with, but eventually it's gonna be all stations, so. If you insist on doing this vanilla, you're going to have to go to every station in the galaxy, basically, and talk to at least one NPC on the station and get them to become a trade agent for you. So, that can take quite a while, and it's very involved. So, how to get a trade agent. You go around, dock on the station, you find an NPC, such as this one, and you need an NPC that won't leave. And what I mean by that is one that's not hireable, not a defense officer or a pilot or a captain or something like that. Someone you can hire to come with you. It has to be someone like this, a ship technician, an arms dealer, missile dealer, something like that. Someone that won't ever leave the station. And then in vanilla, um, you basically have to just walk around and wait until you hear someone talk. And, uh, so here's a grouping of NPCs gives us a good chance. These are all NPCs and won't leave. They're all dealers or technicians of some sort, so they'll all work. And we just wait. Kind of crappy. Ah, there we go. So the guy's got a little dot 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 over his head. We interact with him, now he has engaged in small talk. Dancers, we have to go through the small talk mini game. If you're familiar with Rebirth at all, you've played the little well, mini game. Instead of just hollow dancers, I'd rather discuss the whole VR. You seem upset about it, Hall, right? I'm sure you have a lot more to say on this subject. Have to successfully do the mini game a couple times, went out. I think VR in general is a good thing. And your replies as well, you have to be positive. You can't be argumentative. Basically, don't be a dick and turn them off. There we go. So we've passed our mini game challenge. Now, I already have a trader on this station, so I can't show you, but right here, where this empty space is, there will be another option that says, uh, update me on trade offers. So when you select that, this guy will become your trade agent. And you can only have one trade agent per station, because you only need one. Alright, and then once we've got our trade agent, any trades from that station will now be in our trade computer. And we can see them anywhere we are in the galaxy. And then the other part, all we need is a cargo vessel, someone under our command that we can use. Such as this fine Titteral cargo vessel here. I'm a big fan of the Titteral. It's got decent weapons loadout. It's not the fastest, it's not the most maneuverable. But its saving grace is that it can carry any type of cargo. So if we look here on its storage type, you can see it can carry bulk, do fuel, liquid, container, energy, it can do anything. Anything in the entire galaxy you need hauled, this guy can do it. So you're not constrained to a certain types of cargo. It, it helps a lot to be able to get the best deals around the galaxy. So if we look by comparison here, here's a little Santa Har. It's a pretty cheap little freighter, but it's purpose built. It can only carry one type of cargo. You see it's a Santa Har container type vessel. And its storage type, it can only carry fuel for itself and containers. So this guy's restricted to only one type of wear in the galaxy. Which is nice when you're running a station, that's exactly what you want. But when you're doing trading out in the open like what we're going to do, you need a more flexible type of vessel to get the most out of your money. This guy here, same thing. It's an energy type vessel. It can only carry fuel for itself and energy to another station. Hey, watch where you're going, buddy. Ran right into me. Okie dokie. So as I was saying before, now that we have the trade agent set up on there, it's just down to basic business. We always want to buy low, we want to sell high. That's the whole name of the game. So inside of our trade computer, now that we have our trades set up, we'll be able to filter by lots of different information. And one of the things we'll be able to do is the adjustments on goods. How big of a markup or a markdown, how big of a discount we're getting. So at the top here, we can switch through our different cargo ships that we own. I'm going to select the titteral that's here right next to us. 
and we can see we have all the different categories of cargo that are in the galaxy, all the different wares. We have bulk wares, we have container type wares, we have energy wares, and we have liquid type wares. And again, this is the strength of the Totoro vessel, is that it can use all of these. So we can look at anything that we want. Um, so if we're looking here, let's check out our adjustments, and we see ice is at a big discount. We have a provider that is selling ice at 75% off. We'll switch over to people that are buying. And we see ice here. One of the top is plus 50%. He's buying at 9 credits per unit. If we look at the seller, he's selling them for a buck fifty each. So we can buy at a dollar fifty, turn around and sell them guys for nine. That sounds like a profitable deal to me. So all we gotta do is hit next with our ship selected, our titteral. Tell it to go. Now we can adjust the slider if you want to half load or whatever for whatever reason, but generally you don't want to. You want to do full loads. So now the titteral's off to buy. We'll switch over to buyers. We'll go ahead and set up the sale because we will have the good and we want to sell it all. We don't want to keep any back for ourselves. You can see we're going to make a pretty little penny here. So now our Tudoral is programmed with two different trips. And we can see we are actually on the move here. The Tudoral is dragging us along with it in its gravity well as it uh, moves to go complete the trade that we just set up for it. I believe I'm going to go ahead and uh, dock and ride on the inside while we talk about the trade deal computer. So Egosoft, being the nice people that they are, the great developers, um, evidently there are a lot of people that thought buy low, sell high was too difficult for them to comprehend. So being the kind German gentleman that they are, they went ahead and they made the trade computer. So the default shortcut is shift and Y. If you hit shift and Y, that'll bring up your trade deal computer. And basically what this does is it does all the math for you. All you have to do is sort by the amount of profit a trade deal will get you and uh, pick one of your trade vessels to execute that deal. So they're doing all the buy low sell high math for you to show you where you're going to get the most profit in the entire galaxy. Easy frickin peasy. So down here at the bottom it gives you an explanation of what you're buying where and what you're selling where what's going to happen. So in this case we're selling fusion reactors. And I have my Lyrenia up top, Titteral. We can go through any of my cargo vessels, anything that's capable of carrying these. So I'm going to send my Lyramacron. I'm going to make quite a tidy little profit on this one deal. And there goes my ship. It's just that easy. So all we got to do then is go over, look at one of our next deals. See our ship is set up for two trips. And there's 14 fusion reactors. I'm going to keep those. Those are mine though. Those stay behind. I'm using those for building projects. And you see there's also wares in green. So any wares in green denote that, that involves a station of my own. Those are my own products that I'll be buying or selling if I do that deal. And that's it. So, then all we gotta do, if you wanna be a big time trader, is get yourself more and more ships by using, uh, using your profits. So you can see I have quite a few trade vessels I just have sitting around that I use for moving things to and fro. So we just fire up our trade, con trade deal computer, sort by profits, and then we just go right down the line. So the ship's sitting around doing nothing, zero trip set up. The ship's sitting around doing nothing. Fire up the next one, I'll sell some of my own drones off to one of the shipyards. Off it goes, boom. That guy's on its way, two trips set up. Switch over to the next one, get it going. Ah, uh, space fuel, sell some booze. There we go. Switch over, this guy's sitting around doing nothing. Hook it up, sell some spectrometers. Boom, nine million bucks. Another one. Oh, look at this. This is an opportunity. I only have to put in 70,000 credits of my own, but I get 1 million credits back in profit. Well, that's a sweetheart deal if I've ever seen it. Lyrenia sitting around. Put it to work. Boom. 
And the Podlikev generators we see at the top here, they're the most profitable left. But they're uh, they're off in Talati space. So I'm going to send my Lyrama Kron. I've switched it over there. It's, uh, it's basically a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's a battlefield or a battleship that's masquerading as a, uh, as a cargo carrier. So in Teilati space, they basically have government-sanctioned pirates. If your ship's carrying anything of value through Teilati space, government-sanctioned pirates, privateers, as it were, will jump your ship and try and take whatever it is you're hauling around. So I send that big boy in there, and if they try and take what he's carrying around, they're in for a, uh, a very rude surprise. And there we go. We got all of our ships set up with trades. Everybody's out making me money now. So now, I can go fly around and uh, have some fun. Shoot some bad guys. Do something that's uh, a little more exciting than uh, than just looking at spreadsheets all day. So I'm going to fly over here to a couple of these stations. Uh, check my bulletin boards. See maybe if they got some uh, something fun to do. Maybe I'll rescue one of these freighters over here from some uh, Xenon AI bad guys. Who knows? That's the whole point. You're supposed to have these traders out doing something in the background, making you some profits while you're off doing the things that are more fun to do. That's the whole way that this game's supposed to function. You're not supposed to sit around and watch your ships do deliveries. That's slow and boring, and no one really likes that. So, go off, kill stuff. Let your dudes think for themselves and make you money by themselves while you go blow up a ship like this. So, thanks a lot for watching. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up, maybe even a subscription. Uh, if you have any ideas for future tutorial videos you'd like to see, leave them down in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching.